The noun defining moment in itself is defined as an event that typifies or determines all subsequent related occurrences. These moments are turning points. After these experiences, you are a changed person from there on, whether it be for better or for worse. After these experiences, you are new. But what is it that makes these moments that define who we are? What causes that change of perspective, or of thought, or of heart? What defines a defining moment? We sought out an answer by asking others about the instances in their lives that rewrote them as individuals. What is your defining moment? Defining moment. My defining moments are meeting my wife, oh. and as well as uh, uh, growing up, we would spend the summers in the Smoky Mountains. Tuba fanfare for the first time. Why was that your defining moment? Well, see, you go and you get in the band, you get in the Lafayette Eye band, you're like, man, I'm just gonna be that band geek on campus. But then you play tuba and you play tuba fanfare. And then all the ladies like, oh my god, Drake, play tuba fanfare. So it's about like, the ladies. No, no, it's about <laughs> principle. Principle? It's, it's, it's about the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> my defining moment is when I decided to stop caring about what everyone else's opinions are. My defining moment was when I was a sophomore in high school and I was going to be friend of mine's older sister returned from college and gave a talk to us at our youth group about her wonderful year of studying in Florence, Italy. It was at that point I said I wanted to learn how to travel, I wanted to be a part of that, and so I put myself on a path, on a mission at that point, and I did everything I could to get to that university. And so once I was there, um, I studied Italian for two years at university. Um, I geared all of my academic and curriculum so that way I wouldn't miss anything um, being this year abroad because I'd have to take a lot more liberal arts classes than what my major was. And um, everything worked out for the best. And having that experience being in a foreign country for a year changed me that I have a much more flexible mind frame when I look at things that when things go bad or go wrong, you don't look at that as um, a defeat. You just look at it as an opportunity to do something. Probably about three years ago, um, I went to on a family vacation to my grand, uh, my grandparents, to the Grand Canyon, huh? and um, it kind of inspired me for my future occupations, and and it kind of made me realize how beautiful the earth is. A to B, and it just it was great. It was really good. Yeah. So one time. In physics, we were doing this lab, and we used this thing called an electromagnetic freefall apparatus. And um, my friend Jack texted me later that night and was like, "What's the name of that tool you guys use?" And I told him that the name of it was an electromagnetic freefall dildometer, spelled like dildo meter. And he believed me and put it in his lab report. And uh, that, and it was just a really funny moment. And I realized that that is me. <laughs> that is who I am. What's your defining moment? Yes. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> one of my defining moments is when I moved in with my brother in 2008. Um, he thought that I was really socially weird, so he decided to send me to a whole bunch of summer camps to see if I could develop some social skills. And um, one of the summer camps that he sent me to was Summer Youth Shakespeare Ensemble. And before then I had done a lot of community theater, but mostly in school and I'd never done any Shakespeare, and I would say that that experience definitely changed me because I absolutely developed social skills, but I also developed a stronger understanding of um, what it meant to be involved in theater because it's it was a much more on uh, hands-on experience as opposed to being in a school performance. You got to help make the costumes, you got to do all sorts of different aspects of theater, and that was probably one of the moments that helped me a theater major and someone who's involved heavily in theater and the community and in her life. So that's my defining moment. What is your defining moment? My defining moment was realizing you don't have to have a reason to be nice to people. 
I have a few defining moments. My, my first that sticks out was when I was about 2019, 19, so about four or five years ago. I had just broken up with my boyfriend of three years because his drug addiction, whatever. And um, I was, you know, just out of a relationship of three years. I mean, granted, I'm, I'm still a teenager at this point, so it's very affecting. And I lost my apartment, obviously. There was a split. Um, I lost my apartment, so I was staying, I was couch surfing with friends for like three months. I had to drop out of college that semester. So everything was just this amalgam of, of crap. And I got really sick. And it was around Christmas, so everything it was just like horrible. Bah humbug. Yes, yes. So I'm lying there sick on the couch, and it's Christmas night, and all my friends have gone to their families. They invited me, but you know, I had just broken up with my boyfriend, so I was just kind of like moody and wanted to be alone. So it's just like, no, stay, just hope on this couch. So I did. So it was a wonderful Christmas of me being super sick, super mopey, and just like generally feeling horrible. I get a call in the morning. Also, my family didn't call me. I get a call in the morning getting fussed at by my dad for not calling my mom on Christmas when they had known full well that I was sick, I had lost my house, I had lost a relationship, and I had to drop out of school. Like, you know, this huge, you know, plethora of problems. I had a cornucopia. And that was kind of a defining moment for me, realizing, like, wow, like, you I effectively let myself get that low, and then to have that kind of, it was like a negative reinforcement by my parents and just like, why didn't you call us? And it just, it puts everything into perspective and I just, I worked on myself at that point and bringing myself up from that level of mopery. So like the next day, after Christmas, after the horrible phone call, I just decided to get my life back in my own hands. I managed to save money, go back to school, all on my own. I've been living on my own since I was 17. So, you know, all on my own, do it again, and just kind of like repeat the cycle and not let it affect me as bad as I did. I mean, and a few months later, it was like a breath of fresh air and I couldn't believe that I had given so much time to somebody who wasn't worth it. I would given so much time to problems that were were very ephemeral. They just, they dissipated. And that that was a humbling experience for me to kind of realize that life works in cycles, life works in turns, and you have to, you know, run through the coals to dip your feet in water at the end. That's, that was a beautiful moment, I think, being that low and realizing that you can go much higher. What is your defining moment? Um, I know that, uh, one thing that has really changed my life forever and I think has made me who I am today is kind of like a love of books. I was always a really bookish kid, but like in middle school, books just got really shitty. Um, then I got to sophomore year and I started reading a lot again. I don't really remember what book I started with that got me so like into like classic literature, but I know that uh, the first time I picked up a, a really good book in high school has really made me a different um, my defining moment, I'd have to say, is I went to this kind of this medical camp thing over the summer to see if I was interested in that career, and uh, it's about me respecting my dad. I'd have to say. And so I, he went from this man that I just, you know, thought was rude, was like out to get me. He was just trying to punish me and not make my life fun at all. Then I went to this camp and I learned what he what he had to go through to get to where he is. He went through like 17 years of after high school education just to get this degree, and then waited 10 years into his marriage to clear his student debt and all debt that he had just so we would have a good life and be able to do whatever we wanted to do and raise, you know. I guess when I look back at it, it makes me feel kind of privileged because we'd, we'd go, we'd travel a lot, we'd go all over the world, we went to Australia, we went to New York like 10 times, we've been to California, I've been to Colorado, Pennsylvania, we just pretty much have spent a bunch of time together and he just spent all his money on his family trying to get us to be good boys. And like, until last year, I never respected him as a man or appreciated what he's done for me. But after I realized what he's been through to get to where he is, it changes my complete perspective of him. Like, I respect him as a mentor, you know, as a friend. It's just changed everything. What's your defining moment? 
Alright, so my defining moment was back at the end of first grade, alright? So, I had nearly failed, okay? Well, actually, my teachers were trying to fail me and keep me back in the first grade because they thought that I was, uh, needed special education. Um, at the time, I didn't know how to read, uh, I couldn't talk much either, couldn't do any math, nothing. Um, so they wanted to hold me back, try and make me a little better. My parents were like, no, 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 don't let him, don't let him. And so, I was like, I don't know what to do, I was confused, I didn't know what was going on. And so they asked me, Parker, what do you want? And I was all like, you know what, I'll get back. So I started working really hard, I went to school this summer, and got better. Uh, so last year, I got out of a relationship um, with somebody who really meant a lot to me. And um, a couple months passed, and I was still trying to be like an active part of this person's life. I was trying to maintain some part of the relationship that we had. It didn't have to be romantic, I just wanted to be present in this person's life. And um, by that time, he was he was with another girl. It was it was time to like get past it and move on. But um, he needed a ride home from school one day, and uh, I was like, "Yeah, I can take you home." And knowing <laughs> he lived like 30 minutes out of my way, I I took him out to his house, <laughs> and uh, the entire ride was just awful. It was just really tense, and neither of us knew what to say or how to behave or. Just how to handle the situation and um, I could feel myself starting to break down in the process of like driving there so got to his house pulled up in his driveway dropped him off he got up out of the car without a word and just kind of I, I don't know I felt kind of like the ex-girlfriend taxi service and um, <laughs> he walked inside and I guess I wanted to make a statement about how I felt angry or just bad in general so I pulled out of the driveway and I started speeding down this gravel road <laughs> really quickly and um, I, I ended up doing three donuts around the gravel road, lost control of my car and I'm holding onto the wheel, it's locked and um, I was just completely out of control and I wasn't used to that and I was petrified and a few seconds passed, everything happened really really quickly and I'm halfway in a ditch. I'm okay, my car's okay, I just am kind of shocked. I don't know how to regain control and recover myself. So I'm sitting there, hands still locked on the wheel, and um, I realize there's a car coming down the road and blocking the road, so I have to quickly like restart my car, pull out of the ditch, and I, having nowhere else to go, pull back into the driveway, because anywhere else would take me 30 minutes to get, and um, so I sat there and I called, I called him and I was like, hey, I, I need you, I need you to come back outside, uh, I just, I need your help. And I didn't really explain what was going on, he didn't know what had happened, he didn't, he just didn't know. And uh, he kind of grumbled, alright, and like, <laughs> made his way back out, came down the driveway, saw me sitting there, opened the car door and I'm just sitting there crying and uh, he was like, what happened? So I explained the situation to him, and the first thing he says to me is, um, "Oh yeah, you gotta, you gotta be careful." And then he said the name of the girl that he was with at this point. Um, he was like, "Yeah, she, she almost wrecked pulling out my driveway one time." And that moment, I guess since I was still so attached to this person, that was like the last name I wanted to hear at the moment. I just didn't, I, I wasn't expecting to compared to someone else at that moment and um, that's when I realized that I was still basically living for this person who didn't really care for me or about me that much anymore and I was I was holding on so tightly to the past and um, that was the turning point where I sat down and told myself you need to stop giving all of yourself to people who aren't going to be there for you. Stop living for and almost dying for <laughs> people who aren't living for you. So. I'd probably have to say my defining moment is in Miss Dugas' class, sophomore year, where she assigned the Julius Caesar project, and I had to make a video all by myself in which I played every character. And that's probably what got me into filmmaking. 
and I am forever grateful to Ms. Duga for assigning that project because I now know what I want to do with my life. And it also made me friends. People ask me my defining moment, there's so many things to pick from. The first time I got gonorrhea, the first time I swam the Atlantic. But if you really want to know the moment that made me me, it would be the first moment that I met baby Leonie. It was the summer of 98. We were both in California, young and just trying to do some sinning for the sake of sinning. We saw each other across the beach. Our eyes met. She was afraid because she knew destiny and met her for the first time. She ran away like a gazelle, and I, the young hunter I was, pursued. We chased and gave way and chased. She came close, I ran. I came close, she ran. Next thing you knew, I had a burning sensation when I peed from there on out. Wait, that is the story of how I got gonorrhea. What's your defining moment? My defining moment? Oof. Well, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm largely an introvert. I don't do well around new people. I get very socially awkward in new environments. Even among my own friends, I have trouble with really opening up or just relaxing. But there was this one October night. The year was 2015. Me and my newfound friend Mustafa, barely knowing each other at all, decided to share this night together. We went into my minivan drove for the same drive. We went to Starbucks. We met a lovely girl from Portland, based off Orlando. We went to CC's. We did some yoga. We discovered what it meant to be human. And God, I've just never been the same person since. I can finally not be ashamed of being my myself. And I can look in the mirror and not look away. What was your defining moment? Well, uh, for me, I'd say that a pretty big defining moment in my life was probably like taking the gifted test and getting into gifted. Because like, I don't know, it really sort of, I guess, shaped my whole like high school experience for the most part. Because like, um, I don't know, it was just like being surrounded by the gifted kids like seven hours a day has just sort of had an impact on like who I am as a person, I think. So, I was, say that. Was it was it your decision to try and take that gifted test, or was it your parents pushing for it? Who who got you involved? With this? Um, actually, it was this person named Carolina Shaw who sort of egged me into it. And uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, I guess a new defining moment in my life would be finding out that I defined Evan Garza's defining moment. Ah. I think I'd have to say my defining moment is whenever I switch schools from. STM to LHS. I guess I don't know, like if that really changed anything about me, but it like certainly like allowed me to meet like a bunch of new people that like changed my life in good ways. I don't know. Uh, my defining moment, I guess, a big turning point for me this year was this past December, right after I got back from Christmas break. I realized I had a bit of like a problem with drugs uh, to the point where I was shirking all my responsibilities, I was out at odd hours, it was messing with my health, I couldn't sleep well, I was googling um, can I take LSD four times in one week and it was pretty bad and I didn't really have anyone I could talk to about it but then I don't know, one day in my chemistry class we weren't really doing much, I was done with my work and I went to the back of the classroom and I sat next to these two people that I'm really close to now because of this, but I wasn't that close to at the time and I don't know why, but I just started pouring my heart out to them about uh, just that I felt like I had this like big issue and I felt like, I don't know, I wasn't good enough for myself so I just took a lot of drugs and I was like going down a bad path and they both just looked at me with like big expectant eyes and then they said, why don't you uh, do better for yourself? And I don't know, hearing that, and it wasn't even like I was particularly like, it was a particularly special thing to say, but hearing that for the next week, it just kind of like haunted me. Like, 
do better for yourself, do better for yourself. And then every time I did something analogous to my old habits, I just kept thinking that. And so that was really the turning point or the defining moment of my year because after that, a few days later, I I stopped. I My grades have gotten a lot better. I completely changed the group of people I'm friends with and I don't have a problem anymore and I made friends with amazing people, um, two of which are those people and it's completely changed my life and I don't think I'd be sitting here on this bench right now or be as happy as I am or doing the things that I'm doing if it wouldn't have been for them and it just meant a lot to me. That's my defining moment. A big defining moment in my life is when my grandmother passed away. She passed away about a year and a half ago and she was the matriarch of our family. She was definitely the glue that held us together. She'd been through a lot in her life and she was a beautiful artist and taught us about love and all of all the wonderful things and finding beauty in the world and when she passed away it had a big impact on my family dynamic and my father, it was his mom, um, it's hard for him. He lost his mom and um, and in a way I feel like I lost my dad, part of my dad as well. But my sister and I, she's one year older than me, she and I had a very rough relationship uh, growing up and I feel like my grandmother's death really brought us together because it's, it, showed us how important it really is and I feel my grandmother every day and I just miss her so much. The biggest one in my life is when my uh, cousin died when she was 18. She died her senior, my senior year of high school and um, she had leukemia and because of her death it made me not go to school in state in Missouri and decide to pursue my dreams and I ended up auditioning for Juilliard and New York University and I got accepted to NYU and I went there for theater and it set me on the path that I have for the rest of my life because I thought she doesn't have a chance to do what she wanted to do and I sure better do what I want to do. <laughs> Another defining moment. Nobody really, well at least for me, nobody ever told me how to be an adult. I kind of just had to go into it in my own. My parents were very kind of hands-off parents. They were horrible parents, I'll be honest. They they were both former drug addicts and they were kind of abusive. So we had a rough childhood and I got better as I grew up, but I still, a week after high school, I moved across the country, like from Arizona to Louisiana. And I was just like, I'm gonna be my own person. But nobody really prepared me for what that meant. And it's, it's more than, paying bills, it's about being responsible in every facet of your life. No one's there as a safeguard for you. When you are sick, you have to get yourself to the doctor. You also have to foot that bill. Like, you have to decide whether or not it's it's a big enough issue to do that as well. Like, when you're a child, your parents will, you know, take you to the doctor if you scream loud enough. When when you're poor and in college and you know you've probably broken a bone you think you know how long can I walk on this leg or like can I wait till after the exam to go to the hospital and that was that was a huge defining moment for me was being that adult it's like when did that that turn come it was like finding out I like mustard I hated mustard as a child and when I got older I started to really enjoy it and there's this huge variety of mustards and I was like when did that coin flip when did I just get bamboozled by mustard that... what's your defining moment uh, well uh, at this point in my life I've had many defining moments um, but one that really catapulted me into adulthood I would have to say was um, the night my father got a DWI um, and he decided that he needed to live a sober life and, um, and it bettered our relationship. It um, made me start realizing uh, who I am and what do I want out of life and, um, and how things can quickly potentially be taken from you uh, very, very, very quickly. We're very blessed um, that, his, that his decision didn't cost the life of anyone else. Um, and I'm very thankful um, that that moment happened, actually. It was a very terrible, terrible experience. Um, however, he would not be who he is today, um, and I would not be who I am today if he hadn't made such a poor choice and chosen um, 
to rise from the ashes, just like a phoenix. My dad, the phoenix. <laughs> what defines a defining moment? For the majority of those that we asked, the answer was other people. The influence of friends, family, or even strangers in each of their lives helped to mold the people who stood before us into who they are today. Be it a friend, a sibling, a parent, or a passerby, each has the power to directly change the path of another's life, often unintentionally. We don't always get to choose the people who exist in and affect our everyday lives. And even for those that we do, we cannot control the decisions that they make, only how those decisions influence us in the end. That being said, it is our responsibility to take the lessons we learn from those around us and use them to help us grow to help us define ourselves as individuals that we can be proud of. It is our responsibility, just the same, to be careful with the footsteps that we lead or leave in the lives of others. At some point in your existence, you will be the one to change the direction or the pace of another's life. You will cause that turning point. You will define a defining moment. And in that, you have a purpose. What's your defining moment? Hey, you were recording. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, he looks so nice. Okay. Are you, are you filming? Yeah, I can crop out whatever I want to, so this won't be even filmed. Stop, right stop filming. Stop filming. Okay.